You're listening to the Crawl Space Ninja Show, where healthy homes begin from the ground up. I am Michael Church, your host and founder of Crawl Space Ninja. Today, we got a great episode for you. I had an opportunity to speak with AJ. He is our DIY specialist, and we talk about 50 to 55% humidity. What exactly does that do to mold? Is mold okay if it goes dormant? And I'm going to give you my three steps to addressing mold in the correct order. Let's get into this episode with AJ talking about dormant mold and how that affects your house. Okay, so I have an Ask a Ninja question for you. Um, This person has a 1927 home with a very low crawl space, about two feet tall, including the joist. Um, Their concern is the subfloor. The wood's old, there's visible mold on it, and their true questions are, if the humidity is kept below 50 to 55 sorry, 50 to 55%, should they still be concerned about the dormant mold? And then their follow-up question to that is, can spray foam be applied directly over that mold if it's not active? That is a fantastic question. And let me let me answer the first part. All right, so what does dormant mold mean? Okay, so, um, You know, mold is everywhere. Let's just put that out there, right? So it's impossible for you to have a mold-free environment unless you had some kind of like clean room or something, you know, like where they make, you know, microchips or something like that where they can't allow dust and all that kind of stuff in there because there's always something for mold to grow on. So, but dormant mold, in my opinion, is a little misleading. To To say something is dormant, you may instantly think, oh, dormant means dead, right? I mean, that may be what some people think, but it doesn't. It means it's alive. It's just not active, all right? And, and you know, I always use the groundhog scenario, okay? So a groundhog, we have groundhogs here in East Tennessee, and they go dormant when they hibernate, right? But what happens, let's say that I found a groundhog hole, And I grabbed a stick and I dug it out and I found where they were nesting and it's, you know, January and it's cold. And and I start poking that groundhog with that stick. What do you think that groundhog is going to do to me and that stick? Right? He's no longer going to be dormant. Okay. So what I'm trying to say is, is that the best scenario is to remove the mold, remove what caused the mold and also apply something that kills its root, okay? Because mold, the food source, what you see with your eyeballs is the fruiting body. So in other words, if you look outside in your yard and you know it rains a lot for three or four days and then all of a sudden a mushroom pops up in the middle of your pristine grass, okay, there was mold under the grass before you saw the mushroom, right? So the, the, what we see on wood is the fruiting body of the mold. That doesn't mean that the mold wasn't there. It could have been in the wood growing until it had high enough humidity or grew fast enough for it to start fruit. Now, why does mold fruit or why does it become visible? It's so it can spread. Okay, that's usually what happens. So if you take the word dormant mold and then now you take closed cell or open cell spray foam, they didn't really say which, and you spray over it, did that kill the mold? Mm -hmm. No, no, it didn't kill the mold. It locked it in, but what else did it lock in with the mold? It locked in the moisture. Because there wouldn't be mold there if there wasn't some kind of moisture to start it in the first place. And yeah, they've been running the dehumidifier. It's under 55%. But they didn't tell me what the wood moisture level is. Okay. Is the wood moisture level low? Do they have some kind of hidden leak they're not, they didn't know about? Like the toilet flange is leaking. And then they, they air seal all of that subfloor and joist with spray foam. And now they got wet wood because they didn't know that they had a toilet leak. What happens now? That mold just grows and grows and grows, but now it's not visible anymore because they sealed it up inside a spray foam, right? I hate whenever we as contractors cover up the subfloor. I don't like covering it up with spray foam 
and I don't like it. I don't like covering up with insulation. I'm not saying there's not a reason to do both, but there's, there's, you know, if you have a house 20 years old, there's a really good chance at some point that house is going to have a water leak, whether it's the toilet flange, whether it's the refrigerator ice maker, whether it's the washing machine. And if you've sealed up or covered up that subfloor and that water has nowhere to go except sit against that subfloor insulation, whether it's fiberglass, spray foam or whatever, you're going to have a big problem because you can't even dry it from underneath anymore. Mm -hmm. So AJ, you know, what do we do? What's the first thing we do if there's subfloor insulation and we need to dry out a crawl space? We take it out. We take it out. How am I going to take out spray foam, AJ? I mean, you can't really. I mean, you could, but you can't really. It's 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 a horrible mess. Well, and a lot of people don't know this, but you know, spray foam is actually a, a form of plastic, right? It's it's an expandable Yeah. plastic. So I have scraped off spray foam, and if you look really good, there's still a microscopic, almost waterproofing film still on the wood. So really the only way to get it off is not just to knock off the big pieces, but to actually, you know, sand off that, that, um, adhesive part, you know, that's on the wood. So even if you take the spray foam off visibly, you still might be trapping moisture because, because of that. So I'm not a big fan of spray foaming subfloors. I really, I, I just don't see a, a huge, I am a big fan of air sealing penetrations, you know, so if someone had, Uh, to, to go back to this question, I know it's a low crawl space, but to me, I think you would be better off air sealing all the major penetrations. The other thing too, is if you got a 1927 house, it might have like some kind of tongue and groove with gaps in it. So what happens when you spray foam where the, where let's say I've been in houses where I could see daylight or I could see the, the room above. What happens if I spray foam underneath? Where's that spray foam going to go? It's going to rise up into the room above, right? Mm -hmm. So to me, I think minimizing the stack effect by air sealing the big gaps that you can seal in a, in a subfloor and then insulating the walls of the crawl space to create that thermal break at the wall would be a better choice. And even, I mean, if you're in a really cold environment and the soil is super c